everyone, I'm Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade and I'm going to teach you how to incubate duck eggs. Now I'm excited because I have 11 hens and 3 drakes of all different heirloom varieties. So I have a whole bunch of mix, so I have a blue Swedish uh, drake, I have two khaki Campbell drakes that are purebred, and then from there I've had ducks for about five years, so I have the hens are a mix between a blue Swedish, a Quagua, and a um, khaki Campbell crosses. So I've got laying uh, strains in there, I've got bigger bird strains, so I'm excited to start hatching out some more. Because I don't have a broody duck right now, nor do I have a broody hen that I could put them under. So what I want to do is put them in the incubator. How do we do that? Okay, step number one, you need an incubator. Doesn't matter, I, I like the hover baiter one because that's what I have, but you can get bigger models. Um, you'll have to re read up on them. I'm not familiar with every kind of incubator. This is what I have. Um, and you can take a look at the box here. This is what I got. Okay? So the other important thing is, is I, uh, Incubating is tricky. The first time I incubated, I did a little bit um, over 50% hatching, which I was really excited about. But I made notes. I just grabbed a scribbler from the kids schooling and, and made some notes in here. And going back, it's really important because I was like, what did I do? I wrote the do's and the don'ts. I wrote, you know, what I should have done or what I shouldn't have done. Um, I did it right from day one, when I candled, um, what I saw, what should I've done, all these things in this book. So I'm going to have this with me as I go through because it's, I, I started really good and there were some issues with the hatching that I really want to make sure doesn't happen this time. So my um, hatching rate is increased. So, as we learn together how to do this, let's, how do we start this um, all, all off? So, first of all, you need an incubator. Second of all, you, you get it ready the day before. So you want the humidity, now I'm doing duck eggs, remember, so they're water fowl, and so the humidity is much higher than chickens or guineas. So the first couple of days, I wrote down here that I filled compartment one, and the humidity um, was 43 to 47%. So this is the base. It comes with this here. And this is like a, a wire mesh. And underneath, I don't want to take all of these off, but underneath it says number one, number two, number three, number four. Those are the compartments where I fill. And each compartment... Um, you can increase or decrease humidity by, by the tubes. They run all differently. So you can put this screen on and they just have these little clips here. Now did I put that on top? Yeah, I put that on top. So they have these little clips. So I'm just gonna put them back and you can pour the water through this mesh. And this mesh is where the eggs go on. So I put that right into here and it fits nicely into here. I hope you guys can see that on the screen. How does it look, Ocean? Good. You see that? Okay, good. So I got a fairly good space here um, to put some eggs. Now, if you take a look here, this was my first collection of duck eggs. And I have about this much in the duck house right now that I'm going to collect tomorrow. So. I'm hoping to at least put between 30 and 40 eggs in. And if you take a look at the different colorations, absolutely beautiful. And you can see how this can fill out. You know, as I as I put them put them all in. Now, I don't wash my eggs. I try to create um, their nest. No, I want you to leave the eggs for now, Munchkin. The nest as clean as possible because they have natural coatings that protect the eggs. Now, I'm going to leave these here. They're stored downstairs. Now, for word two is, I collect eggs for about six to seven days before I put them in the incubator. These are very fertile. So I'm going to cover these back up. It's okay, Munchkin. And cover these back up. Now, get back to this. Okay, so I need to fill compartment one. So I'm going to grab my water, and this one's compartment one the biggest one and it runs 
here all the way around. So I'm going to watch over here to make sure I don't spill the water. Because so I honestly didn't write how many cups this tray takes. So I am watching. The water is hitting. Uh, let me just take a look. It's my lighting. I'm going to go a little bit more. And, oh, I think we're almost there. So it almost, believe it or not, it, oh, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to spill over the top here. Perfect. It looks awesome. So I did about, about uh, two cups in there. So that's, so it takes about two cups of water. So that's tray one. So I did that for the first day because what you want to do is you bring it to about 43, 47 humidity for three days. Then on the fourth day, you increase and fill another tray. Because when mama goes to feed, she makes her belly wet. She also pulls feathers from her, from her breast. And, and when they come and send the eggs, they increase the humidity by sitting on them. And, and the moisture from the down inside, on her brings up the moisture and it keeps the membranes from drying out in the eggs. And it's so important with waterfowl as, I found, as I'm finding these things out. Okay, so I got that started. Now, you can do a turner. I'm going to show you here. I have a turner for this incubator that hasn't even been opened since I moved. But I will show you how it's, how you use it. Hopefully this doesn't take too long for me to open this. Sorry guys, I should have done this before I did the video. Oh, okay. there we go. All right, so I'll pop this turner out. Just like that. I'm so happy to survive the move here. So this is a turner and I could put this turner right in here. And you notice that this area, Ocean, zoom into this area. Right here, there's like a indent in here that's where you would put this cord so it doesn't um leach out the heat so we'll go like something like that and you would put all the eggs in here i'm just going to use this for demonstration just like that and you turn on and it just turns them slowly it goes back and forth but what i found with the duck eggs is that the ones out here didn't get as warm as in here and I had uneven hatching so I'm actually not going to use the turner for the duck eggs because the duck eggs are bigger I am actually going to play an X and O game with the eggs instead and try to mimic more of a natural way mommy would do it now I'm just going to put that on the floor for a moment and I'm going to teach you how to do that. And we are going to do it. I'm going to do it for the first time, the X and O method. So you get to see right. It's something that I haven't done before for the first time. And we can learn together. So this is set up. Simply put on your lid. Now if I remember, I'll do this. Beautiful. So you can see right here where that indent was. There's also a... Um, open part in the lid that that cord would come out now what I may do is actually just fill that in um, with something a cotton piece of cotton ball or something like that that I'll get later just to so there's not um, uh, an area for for uh, the humidity to escape so now I'm going to put that in see and now I plugged it in this here is your control panel Okay, um, I'm just going to grab the camera from you for a moment. Turn it around here, Ocean. So right here, it tells you the humidity, and it'll keep jumping up and down and the temperature for about 24 hours. That's why you want to do this before you put the eggs in so you have a steady temperature and humidity. So it's going to go like that for a little bit um, until things are reached. And it's very quiet. It's not that noisy. I think you'll probably hear the furnace uh, that kicked on down here more than the incubator noise. And I'm just going to put my ear to it. Yeah, I do hear it because I can't hear it over the furnace. The furnace just kicked on as soon as I turned this on. So yes, it is running. So we're going to run this till tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go out with um, 
one of my children, we're going to collect the duck eggs and then I'll show you how to do an X and O method. Three days from there, I'll show you how to candle them for fertility to see which eggs are fertile and which eggs are not. And if you don't know, keep them in. I've learned that lesson last time. I couldn't see anything and then I cracked it open and I, my heart fell. I was like, that was a fertile egg. If you don't know, leave it in. Um, but I'll show you how to candle them as best as I can on the film. And then step by step, I'll show you exactly what I do. So this film is going to be a little bit longer, probably ends up probably about 45 minutes, I would say, by the time I'm done. But I want to really thoroughly go through this um, and pass on the knowledge that I um, have taught myself to you so you are successful. that black duck that you saw she lays the most unique eggs ever so grace we start collecting these and you can tell those are her little feathers like she's she's starting to take her feathers and she has went broody before so after this after this um, after incubate all these eggs if she does go broody she can sit on her eggs so go ahead grace Collect those, let's see what we got in here. More eggs. Look at that. More eggs. Yeah, go ahead, Grace. Collect. Look at that. They look at all these eggs with incubator. So when you collect them, Grace, just wipe off the the um, shavings. Now I like using pine shavings, and you'll notice in my duck house there is no water. Ducks, okay? Um are I call them pigs with feathers because they make a mess with water and so that's why we take them out first thing so they have all day on the water but at night it is uh, it stays dry in here okay so how many do we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve let's see what we got got in here so 
as we do this, we'll just we put their nest box back in. I'll organize it a little better after the film here. Thirteen. What do we have in here? Oh, Thirteen. And then for the goose, 13. I put a board here for now, but the ducks seem to be using it. So let's see here. Grace, can you take your hands and see if there's anything in that nest? Move all that. Move the whole thing. Come on, don't be scared. See, no, dig, dig right in there. Dig, dig, dig. An egg. Yeah. Got thirteen, fourteen. See, there's some more. Fifteen. Fifteen. Wait, see, there's another one. Sixteen. Okay, now dig all around that nest. Like dig everywhere, because sometimes they like to bury it. Seventeen. 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 We usually don't get that many. Yes, yeah, so they're laying like crazy though right now because they love going out into the swamp areas we have. They just they're it's April. I mean everything that's good. That's about it. Everything is um the natural habitat is here. Okay, you guys, and I'm gonna. These are all fertile. These are all fertile eggs. And I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna show you this one. What I made a mistake was Grace grabbed this to me, and it, whoa, it accidentally knocked here, and I cracked it. Now this will be a breakfast egg for us. I can't use this in the incubator because I broke it by accident. So. We are going to take these Seven precious eight. eggs inside the house and we're going to get them into the incubator after we're done um, feeding the chickens, feeding the pigs, feeding the dog, feed the cats, everything here. And then we're going to put about 30 to 40 some eggs Back in the incubator. Here the next day, I have Annika here and Ocean filming. And we are at 99.9 degrees Fahrenheit and we are reading a steady temperature of 46% humidity. Now is the day to get the duck eggs in. I, since I have a mixed breed and you've seen that, you've watched me collect the eggs outside, we have one dilemma that I um, had happen last time. Now if you take a look at these duck eggs, you see this size of duck egg and then you see this size of duck egg and this one's a little longer. What I'm gonna do uh, is pull the biggest duck eggs out. So this one over this size. And it may not seem that big of a deal, but this one will take one day longer to hatch. So I'm gonna throw all the bigger duck eggs in one day earlier to have a higher success of hatching. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this running and we just pop the lid open here put it put it down here for the moment so it's nice and warm in here I'm going to fill tray four now remember we talked about trays I'm going to fill tray four because I want the humidity a bit higher I want it hitting in the 50s now, if this isn't high enough after, no big deal. I'll just fill up another tray. All right, so now I'm set. Okay, are we ready to go? So let's take a look. Back up a little bit there, Ocean. So I'm going to play the X and O method, which means that I'm going to put an X on one side and O on the other with a pencil. You don't want to do a pen or anything that's going to um, seep through the pores of the egg. That would hurt the baby or the chick, or the duckling, or whatever you're, you're hatching, keeps, guinea fowl, anything like that. Okay, so X and O's game. So let's look for the biggest egg. Okay, this is a good size egg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm gonna put X, I'm gonna flip it, and I'm gonna put an O. And I'm gonna put it down on the O side. So when all the O's are up, then I know that I turn them properly. Okay, so all of my O's. What else is a bigger egg? This is a bigger egg. Compare lies, eh, not too, this is not bad. So let's take a look. 
No, so these are the older eggs. These ones aren't bad. So these are the brand new ones. Now, let's take a look here. We might not have got this. See, these ones are a bit smaller. I think still this one here should have another day. So do X and O's. Oh, yeah, let's take a look. Oh, and this one's another one of Jumper's eggs. I love these eggs. X and O. Now, like I said, I like really thorough videos, so I'm going to be taping this as, as I go. One, because it's a natural diary for me of what I did. And two, I hope it helps you guys to see what's how to set this right up and not just do this in five minutes. All right, this one is a bigger egg too. X, O. What else do you think, Annika? This one here. Again, look at the beautiful shades here. X, O. Mom. Okay, what else? No, that one's not too bad. Oh, hey. Now, let's take a look over here. What other eggs, Ocean? Even if you spot a bigger egg, you tell Mom what you... Mommy. I think this one's a bigger egg. Yeah, here. I was just going to say that. X, Mom. O. Mommy. What do you think? Oh, now that one's a bit tiny. This one's just kind of plump. Watch your camera there, Munchkin. This one's a... Huh! This one is very small. Now look at this one in comparison. It might actually not even be fertile, but we'll see. It looks a bit tiny. Maybe it's just another girl starting to lay. But these ones look fairly uniform over here. Um, so I'm going to leave these ones out till tomorrow. Alright, so these ones I'm going to start one day earlier. So I have them in all oh. So what I'm going to do now, it is close to lunch, so I'm going to start this at supper time. How to turn eggs. Okay, so you take your egg and you turn it to the X side. Okay, and you would turn all of them to the X side. Then the next, you know, every, and I like doing it. Breakfast, lunch, supper, bedtime. Breakfast, lunch, supper, bedtime. So <laughs> in my house, it's it's before you eat, you do your chores. So I do I do the eggs first. Okay, so we're gonna leave these in here. Then I'm gonna turn them throughout today. I'm gonna turn them at supper and before bed. Now back to these eggs over here. I'm going to do the X and O method tomorrow morning. Again, as long. I'm going to check my humidity. I'm going to mark all these. I'm not going to film that, but I'm going to mark all these, put them into the incubator, and then I'm going to turn them. Again, breakfast, lunch, supper, evening, before bed. Breakfast, lunch, supper, before evening. Get into that routine. It's highly important. And then I will see you back at day four. At day four, all the eggs should start having blood vessels in them. And we're, I'm going to show you how, what we would call candling them but I won't actually use a candle I'm gonna actually use a flashlight in a dark room but it's called candling I'm gonna see fertility level and then after that we'll take probably about a two-week break I'm gonna turn them and keep turning them then we'll come back and show you what I do so this is so exciting first of all how many eggs do we have two four six eight eight see so here 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 eggs. Awesome. Let's hope for 30 ducklings. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you back in. Good morning. morning. We are on day seven already, and we are going to candle. Now, when, I, when, when you go and you do your research and they say you need to candle your eggs, um, one, you don't have to if you don't want to. If you know for sure that your animals are breeding each other, no big deal. And I am confident that I got 100% fertility. They are breeding like crazy. But, so I don't really need to do this, but to teach you guys, I will show you how to candle. I love candling. Um, but I don't actually use a physical candle. I don't have um, those a machine where I put the egg in and it's dark. I do it the old fashioned way flashlight that is on it's flashlight you don't this is my husband's flashlight that that's so a little bit fancier any flashlight will work even those small little ones for camping anything like that as long as it has the top here it'll be good all right so I like doing this 
at day four. We are day seven because my life is busy and when there was no way to get to filming this and candling it. So today's our opportunity. So in my book here, I'm going to put um, day seven and I'm going to put, I'm going to candle eggs. Okay, and so I am continuously turning them from two to four times a day. There's some days that I honestly go, oh my goodness, I forgot, and I can't, and I turn them. You know what? Take a breather. What I've, what I've learned with incubating is you just need to relax. Do the best that you can, and the results will be good. You know, you've got to turn them. But if you forget once or twice during that day, as long as you're turning them some, you'll be doing good. I am spraying them twice a day, and how I, am, I will show you how I'm spraying them after so that we're not dealing with wet eggs. Oh, okay, hey, exciting part. I'm going to candle one, then we're going to swap the camera. Ocean is going to candle one. So what do you need for candling? Flashlight and a completely dark room. So your bathroom is a good place. Down here, I have no washroom. So we're gonna use our cold storage. So, are you ready, Ocean? Yes. Oh, I love candling. So we're looking for blood vessels. So we're gonna open the incubator, randomly get an egg, and I'm gonna candle my white eggs because the dark green eggs and jumper's egg, that really dark one, will be exceptionally hard. So I'm gonna check for fidelity, take a random amount, let's say 10 or 12. They're fertile, that's good enough for me. So let's go to cold storage. Okay, so we're going to enter in the dark, a dark room here. So get the door behind you, Ocean. Now I hope this shows up on screen. So it's cold in here, so I want to do this fast. Now, if you can see that orange mark, don't get too close, but in that orange mark, you can actually see blood vessels. Now I hope you can, if you take a good look, you can actually see that blood vessels, and that is a duckling forming. Isn't that absolutely awesome? Yeah. So you're just holding the light under the egg and you can see what's happening inside of it, which is just, oh, this is light forming right there. Fertile egg. Okay. It's cooling down. So let's go back. I'll just keep that open there for a second, Ocean. Okay. All right. So let's pop this egg. So hundred percent fertility on that one. Woo! -hoo! I mean, those ducks have been breeding like crazy. So, Ocean, I'm going to randomly select you another egg. Here you go. Perfect. Oi, okay, bring that here. Bring that here. I'm turning this on. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look. So, we're going to close the door behind us. And she's going to hold it right underneath the egg. And what do we see here, Ocean? Blood vessels. Blood vessels. Now, if you move these little fingers away a little bit and hold it right underneath, you will actually see blood vessels and they're right there. I'll point it with my finger. They're right there and that's the best that we can, we can show you. So, and the blood vessels kind of come creeping up here and that is a duckling forming. And if you could actually see inside the egg, there would be a little heartbeat pounding in that egg. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so we, we did a check, so we're going to open this up, and I'm going to just spray them just to increase the humidity. And all I'm doing is just spraying the eggs and then putting the lid back on. So I will continue to turn them between three to four times a day, spray them twice. I like spraying them in the morning and in the evening, and we will do a check in about two weeks. We'll candle them again, and we should actually start seeing a duckling in the egg. So I'll see you in. Hey everyone, it is about, oh, just over two weeks. I meant to shoot this video three days ago, but life gets busy and I think you all know what I mean. So I'm going to check my, t my temperature here. I am at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, 60% humidity. I have trays one, two, and four that is filled to get between that 57 and 60. Once it reaches under 60, I refill them, and that's why I have water right here. So we are going to um, what they call candling, or use a flashlight, and we are going to see the development. So day, what was it, three or four 
or five, I can't remember, we candled those eggs and we saw blood vessels. So what I'm gonna do is candle two eggs and I'm gonna candle a dud. Now I already found the dud in here. It was too small and I had thought, yeah, that's not probably gonna be fertile, but let's give it a chance and it's not. So I wanna show you what a non-fertile egg looks like and what fertile eggs. And we are going to do that with the white eggs because you can see it so much better on demonstration. So we need to do this quick, right? Yeah. So we are gonna get, grab three eggs. We're gonna run, not run, but walk to the cold storage. Nova is so nicely filming for us. Way to go, Nova. Ocean mm -hmm. is with me here. So let's do this. So open up the incubator. I'll grab one. This we're one. doing white, no. No, we're white. doing white. This so we're doing this one, that one, and I'm gonna grab the little dud, which is this one right here, even though it is um, green. Come with me, Nova. We're gonna go to the darkest uh, place. Remember, you need to be in a dark place. Uh-huh. In my cold storage, here we come. Come on. I, I got okay. okay, so it's cold in here. And I've got pockets here, so I'm going to put this, these two eggs in my pocket. So what do you want to do here, Ocean, is, can you grab, no, not too close. Perfect, let's just take a look. Is hold your hand over the egg so it brightens. Now look at that. I hope you guys can I see that. See. Just hold on. I don't want to drop the egg. Don't, don't move it. Just hold that flashlight. You see that blood vessel? That blood vessel is a little duckling for me. You see that blood spot? That is him forming. Can you get that in there, Nova? Okay, and then if you lighten it here, you can actually see little blood vessels. And this little duckling is forming, and there's some more blood vessels. Wow. Can you see that? Yeah. Just helping you out, Nova. It's so hard to see, but it is a fertile egg. You can do one right away. I'm going to show a non-fertile, and then you can do the other one, Ocean. I'll hold the flashlight. Okay. Very still. Yeah, it's tri tricky, but the best thing is to hold it under, you know, like this. Now look at the difference on this one. You notice there's no black spots. There's no blood vessels. This is a complete dud of an egg. What is a dud? A dud means that it's not fertile at all. How does it get fertile? Because it must have been this duck's first or second egg. And a lot of times the first and second eggs are not fertile. And this one... So she wasn't mated yet, mm. right? So the drake drake never got to her, and so the egg just becomes a non-fertile egg. Mm -hmm. Good question. So, can you next make one. that egg? Next one. Okay. I think this one here. Are you ready to hold that? Okay, put your hand underneath. No, right here, so it blocks the... Right here. So what do you want to do is right here, Ocean. Now, take a look. No, yeah. not too close. Take a look at that. You see that see blood vessel? Blood. This is when I wish I had such a better camera, you guys. I am doing my best. Mommy, see that? I want to turn it. You can. Ca yeah. I can see the. This I can see the heartbeat. The I can yeah. see the heartbeat. If you can see the heartbeat, you can, can see, see the it. growing. Boing, boing, boing. We've got about a week and a half left. This is unbelievable, you guys. This is life in an egg. Look at the blood vessels. Look at that. And this here, which is really good. I should flip this over. Oh. You, can you see, see this air pocket? Oh, Nova, I know. We're just learning. Can, kind of get that. You're blocking the light a little bit too much there, Ocean. Let's see here. Oh, we can't really see it. But that's okay. Right here. You see that? You see Where? You see this here, right here? This part right here that's yeah. glowing? That's the air sac. So what happens is that chick, or that duckling, sorry, is going to break the egg right at this side. This air sac right here. Isn't that just simply amazing? Yeah. All right, let's go back to the incubator. And put them back in, of course. Otherwise, they'll just die. They won't be okay, Nova, no, right back here. Okay. Hey. Wait, no. Yeah, just grab that one. Let's open the incubator back up. So this is such oh. an awesome thing to show your kids. So this one is the done. So I'm going to take that one right out, put it here now. I want to check this one because this one's a bit small. Now let's see if I can do this right no. at the light. And I cute wrong the wrong thing. And this one, even though it's small, has blood vessels. Where? Right here, Nova. Can I see? Right here. See a blood I vessel? Can see it. I can see I it. Saw. I can see it. I can see it. See I that? See it. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Actually, that comes up pretty good with this light. You see that, you guys? Can we try a jumper egg? 
I want to see Let's how see what we got going. I got one. Now this one might be hard to see, but you <gasps> got don't watch it. No ocean, That's we're filming. Sack. That's the, the air sack. sack. And let's take a look. Oh, we won't see anything. We too won't black. see anything. Too but there is a little blood vessel, but it's too black. So this is pretty cool. I'd like to try this one. No, because we got that incubator open. Mm. Okay, so what we want to do is turn the eggs. The Nova, axis. pay attention to where you're filming. X's. We're gonna film. We're gonna turn to X's, just like Mama would turn. Her eggs. Can I? No, you're filming there, Munchkin. Yeah. You focus on that, okay? We're gonna turn all these eggs, and that's not bad. One unfertile egg with all of these is really good, and that egg is probably spoiled, so we're just gonna kind of chuck it in the bush because a disgusting spoiled egg is really gross smelling, isn't it, Ocean? <laughs> and yeah. Nova, we it is great. It. Ugh. You yeah. don't want to eat that. No, so what we want to do is do that, and then Nova back up a bit with that, and we spray mm -hmm. it like Mama Duff would have went into the pond. Put the incubator back on. Done. So that is two and a half weeks. They are they are ready to hatch either April 30th or May 1st. Mm. I am excited. Today is April 20th. So am I. Unbelievable development. Life is just simply amazing. I will see you uh, about two days before I think they're hatching because we got to do one thing with the incubator. So I will see you in about a week and a half. <laughs> Guys, the last little bit of notes here. T three to two days before these eggs need to hatch, what you want to do is keep this lid on, keep it running, and fill all four compartments. Completely full of water, put the lid on, and you should read a 67% humidity. Now, it says that you should not run this machine any higher than 65%. I like running it as high as I can. There's also a valve here, so if I need to, I could open this up to let some humidity out. But I want the highest amount of humidity as possible, so those membranes do not get um, dried out. Now the eggs are actually moving. Some of them are and so what's nice is that there is an actual clear top to this so when they start pipping, pipping means breaking through the shell, um, I will hopefully be able to film it. Again when they hatch do not open the lid. They need 24 hours in here. They actually eat the yolk. So it's the whites that form the the duckling, it's the yolk that is, they eat that, so they can actually survive 48 hours without any extra food. So this is the exciting moment, because I hear chirping, and the eggs are alive, and now it's just waiting for them to hatch. Good so stay morning. tuned. It is 6 o'clock in the morning, day 28, and we have some pipping, and I know through this screen right here, it is hard to see. But there is actually three eggs pipped. And what pipping is, is you see this little break in the egg. It's like somebody took a pin and just kind of made a hole in the egg and removed just a little shell. That's called pipping. So today, by the end of today, we should have some baby ducklings. Now when they start coming, you can probably see that easier. But you can actually see that there's a pip in this egg right here, straight down. And... This one right here, there's a pip and another one here. And it's really hard to see right now. But we are day 28 and what I've noticed is some of the smaller eggs are pipping and the larger ones too. So we're 28 days and we have a large one. Remember I made those squiggles on the egg? They, there's a pip in one of those bigger eggs, which is a really good thing. Now all eggs will... Um, pip at different times and just because they pip doesn't mean that they will actually hatch right away it could take 12 hours from that initial pip so patience 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 and this is where I get all excited and you don't want to help them because it's just the same thing as if you were to help a butterfly come out of its cocoon you actually kill the butterfly you don't want to help these guys unless it's life or death they pipped, 
give them time. They kind of store up the energy. They eat the yolk. They do all these things in this time that they are going to hatch. So I am excited. I am going to put on the the brooder light today. Make sure everything's warmed right up for these guys for 24 hours later to hop in. So I am so excited that things are happening. And you can actually hear the ducklings chirp. It's hard to hear on the phone, but if you stand still and just listen, the eggs are actually chirping. It is the coolest thing to see life unfold right before you. Hey I'll guys, you it remember the first um, film I said that the that the eggs are pipping. Um, so this that was six o'clock this morning, and this is seven hours later, and this egg right here that you can see has that crack and I'm going to put the flashlight over that middle one right there um, you can see it moving and it's it's opening look at it go and so I'm thinking filming with the flashlight into the incubator and then filming it works pretty good look at that that little guy is pushing and pushing so from the time it pipped to now is already seven hours so you guys gotta have a lot of patience so I'm hoping by before I go to bed that this one will be um, hatched. So let's take a look here of what else. This one's pipped over here. Um, this one is pipped. You can see that slight um, broken part. There's about 15 in total so far that are pipped, but this one is the furthest along. Now I'm trying to film with a flashlight here to get you guys a better view. And hopefully you guys do. Um, there's some more pipped over here. You can see some more broken right there. And the white one beside it. So all throughout. Now this is seven hours later, you guys. So this whole process can take like two days long. So you guys got to be really, really patient when things are starting to um, hatch, okay? And again, don't help out. He needs to pop out himself. This, that's the, how strong they are. And look at that. I am so happy I could get you guys a better view. This is just awesome. So I'm going to go fresh my kombucha. And then I'm going to come back down here and check again. And if there is lots of development, I'll take another quick film. And if there isn't, um, I'll just wait a few more hours. But I'll tell you how many hours in elapse um, there is in time here. So let's cheer this little little guy on here. Thank you guys. An hour and a half later and his head is out. Look at him. Let's see if we can catch him coming out of that egg. So I'm just, for a moment, I'm gonna come over here and take a look. There's another one coming right here. And that one is really, really trying to pop out, hey? And I have four of my kids here watching at the same time. Annika, can you move your head a little bit? That is so cool. It's Scott. Look, it's Scott. Those are ducklings, Annika. Baby ducks. Yeah. Take a look here. His head is out. Yeah. And his, this, that's going to crack open. It is. It's going to crack open. What are those right there? It's all his feathers and that's his bill. Oh, look at what? that. He's really trying. Annika, okay, keep your head up, okay? Oh, yeah. It's a really, really, really hard work for them to come out of their shell. <gasps> he's, he's coming. Yeah. Keep your heads up, you guys. Still. Why are they cracking open? So they can get out. He yeah. down to the wing out. Yeah. Mm. 
open. That didn't take long for him to get to that big of a point. Mm. Those ones are gonna crack open. They're all gonna crack, hopefully. This one is cracked open, and that one is cracked open. <gasps> and he's the first one out. Oh, look at that. He's out of his shell. <laughs> that one's the second one. Yeah, yeah, he's... That is the pool come down. No, no, it's not. Fine. Now the ducklings got to get all fluffy. They have to dry up. They'll stay in here until they're all dried and fluffy. Yeah. The best is to keep them about 24 hours. Put that the egg up. Mom. No, no, we're going to just leave that egg right there because there's so many more that need to hatch. All are going to hatch and then we are going to take those yeah. out. What are those right there? It's part of the yolk. Mm. Now the other thing you guys is watch your control here. I'm at 74% humidity, which is good, um, but just make sure that that you're not too, too high. And remember, my incubator here has a vent, so if it gets too high, I can pull that um, to let some humidity out. If you take this off, yeah. That. Oh, Ryan, me okay, I'll check back here. Two and a and half hours back. later, take a look. They have totally fluffed up. I can so see Khaki Campbell in both of them. Just beautiful. They're happy. And you notice that already because there's no mom. They are always together. And they're also playing ping pong with the other eggs. That's the, They keep moving them. And you can see the little pips. Um, we're actually just waiting on this egg right here, that um, blackish dark egg. It has a huge pip and I'm really excited to see this one because last year we didn't have many eggs from Jumper and I really want um, one of her offsprings to be one of my hens because she's such a good layer. So we are literally just waiting. We have no more that has hatched but lots that have pipped. So again, Lots can happen in the next 24 Everyone, hours. Take a look. Remember that dark egg right there? It has hatched. We were out fencing and I sent my daughter in and wow, this is the egg that I've been waiting for and it is like true to mom. It will be a, at least mostly as I can see that the chick is still wet. So sometimes it's hard to tell all the colors, but it has jumper jeans for sure. Dark black. Well, this is so exciting. Annika, you're pushing on the incubator. These two are not yeah. wet. If you took, take a look, those are the other two originally. They're happy and healthy. This one just got born. So, so exciting. So we'll just one, keep waiting. It's like rest. five in the morning. And I'm checking the incubator. Plus, I've got a problem. I've got to leave to town. There's one being hatched right over here. And I've got to put on my on my uh, camera, my light here, so you guys could see. Where did he go? He's right in the corner there. Right there, he's gonna come out. There's lots that are pipped. So today is 28 days for some of these eggs. And what I did was, because I'm one-handed here, I took these guys out. I put them in this bucket because I'm gonna walk outside so that way it keeps the heat in um, temporarily. So what I what figured is, I'm running a good humidity, 73%. The rest need to hatch. These guys are creating these eggs like ping pong balls all over the place. I know I'm going to be in town for at least eight hours. We're getting goats, um, picking up goats today. So we spent about oh, four hours setting up fencing last night. We've got um, a cows coming, fencing done, a guy coming. It is insanely busy. Plus all these eggs are hatching. So... I refilled the compartments, 
um, took these guys out. We're going to head outside, put them under heat lamps, and I think that'll be the best situation for the rest of them coming up here. So let's head outside. Okay, you guys, so I am in my chicken coop at 5 in the morning. All the geese, so you're going to hear some background noises. The chickens are here. There's chicks over here. There's more chicks here. I put this heat light here for already on. There is food here, so I need to refill, I need to fill up the water, move this out of the way, and get my chicks in. Now, I did a fast walk but I think it'd be really smart for these guys to get out of the incubator into a brooder box. So I'm just going to just gently, because I'm one hand here, and get them right underneath that heat. Just gently spill them out. It's not gonna hurt them. There you go. Into something where they can grip their, their little, uh, um, I uh, can't think of the names, 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, feet on. So those are the first six, and there are lots more coming. And they will light that heat lamp right up there. So they'll enjoy that. Plus it's warm in here. With all the heat lamps and the animals, they've got a better chance of, of just um, warming themselves right up here into, into this environment. So I'm going to just fill up this water. Just give me a moment. Okay, you guys. So the water's filled. The food here. And notice I put the food and the water. If you can hear me over my toes. The food and water is right beside them. So they're going to relax right underneath this heat lamp and, and warm themselves up until I keep putting the rest in. And that way when I'm in town, I know for sure that... The other eggs have a better chance instead of being, you know, like hit everywhere. Hey, snowflake! I know, they're not used to me being this inside so early, but but uh, I gotta do this before we go to town today. Okay, you guys, I will check on you in an hour. I will give them an hour to make sure that they are okay, and I will continue to check on them once an hour as before I go to town here this morning. So let's take a look. So these are new. These are the silkies. They're looking good. I will come in here and refresh water and everything um, before I go to town. So, say good morning. So there you have it, you guys. Um, I will check back in that incubator and I'll keep you posted on uh, on how many. Have. This is what we got from the incubator: twenty-five healthy ducklings. Look at that! I am actually come really, really impressed with the. Uh, with this hatch so at the end we ended up having one that never developed fully in the egg one that died in the egg um, and the eight other eggs that didn't make it actually were not fertile and that um, sometimes happens a lot on the first batch of eggs that you put in especially if it is the first eggs that your ducks hatch there's a higher chance of more to be infertile so look at that. Aren't they awesome looking? Look at the colors on the eyes. Look at that guy. They, they look a little bit red just because of my light right now. But they are happy and healthy. So we got food and water out for them. And so if you guys have any questions with incubation, you know where to, what to do. Comment on the bottom, bottom and I'll be happy to answer any questions.